Hey everybody, I'm back with a uh, very special one card mail day. And uh, typically I don't do a one card mail day, so that uh, should give you an indication that it's a big, big item. And this is actually the biggest item I've ever purchased. Uh, the most expensive card uh, in a landslide. It's probably double what I've ever paid for a card. And I think I've got a pretty decent collection. If you've seen my other videos, I've got a lot of a good, strong vintage collection. And uh, the reason I have this book, this 2011 standard catalog of baseball cards in front of me is really, this is where it all began for me. Uh, I collected when I was a kid and, uh, and kind of stopped when I was a teenager in high school. And uh, basically I, I was living in North Dakota at the time back in 2011 and went to the local library where my wife just happened to work. And as I was waiting her, for her to get off work, they had, uh, this book was was in the new arrival section, so I you know, pulled it off the shelf and started uh, looking through it, and it kind of sparked my interest. My wife uh, eventually got off work, and I decided, why, why don't I just check it out? So I checked the book out and, and took it home with me and uh, started reading it some more and looking at all the cards that I'd collected as a kid and looking at the values and reading the backstory on some of the more rarer stuff. And uh, really, really sparked my interest, and so I thought, you know what, it's wintertime in North Dakota, cold and dark, and uh, I needed an indoor hobby. So I figured I'd start collecting again, uh, baseball cards again, just like I did when I was younger. And uh, so uh, the hobby really, really kind of grew on me. And as summer rolled around, I figured, you know what, I need to buy this this book. You know, I'd already returned it to the library, the copy I had. So I bought it on eBay, got it in, and I and I proceeded to, to go through it again and find all the, the high-end cards, the expensive cards that I dreamed about owning as a kid but just couldn't afford. And so I made a list of all the key 1950 and 1960 and 1970 rookies and then started the journey to try to acquire them all, at least all the ones I could get my hands on. So as it stands right now, here we are about seven years later, and it's been quite a journey. I've got nearly I've got all the 1970 cards that I was looking to get. Uh, I'm missing just a few of the 1950s ones, some of the, the higher end stuff from the earlier 50s. And then uh, a couple cards, just two cards from the 1960s that I still needed to get that were on that original list. Uh, the first one was the 1963 Pete Rose rookie card, uh, extremely tough, a high numbered short print card. And then the other one was this card that I just picked up, the 1967 Tom Seaver rookie. Uh, now I'm not really, I wouldn't really consider myself a Tom Seaver collector. I have a, his 68 card in a lower grade. I have a 69 as well, and a couple others here spattered here and there, but I've never considered myself a Seaver collection, or excuse me, a Seaver collector. I didn't have a big collection of him. And uh, so this card itself, uh, definitely on that list, it's an iconic card, the 1967 set. This is a high numbered short print. So being as it is an iconic card and a short print at that, I figured I'd go ahead and uh, fork over the money to, to get this in a uh, investment grade. And if you've seen my collection, uh, I'm not necessarily an investment grade collector. I'm more of a collector grade. I'm all about getting uh, every card that I want, and I don't want to you know tie up a bunch of my funds in these high-end uh, cards because like, it kind of stops me from getting the rest of the stuff I want. But uh, fortunately, uh, it is tax return season, and I had some money set aside that I'd like to, to put into what I would consider an investment great card and, and seeing as this is a card that I'd been wanting for such a long time and still had it on the list I figured I'd pick it up uh, here in this uh, SGC near Mintiment 8. Now for those of you who uh, know that PSA is, is is the premier grader I think that in my opinion at least uh, that may be debatable but uh, PSA is is my number one choice when it comes to graded cards but SGC is my number two Typically, in SGC cards, they, they go for less than PSA. That's that's pretty standard uh, car, uh, common knowledge. So uh, when this came up in a near mint in 8, I decided I would go ahead and uh, fork over the money for it. Uh, I had a chance to buy this uh, several years ago in a PSA 8. Uh, it was around $1,200 as a buy it now. And I looked at that as an insurmountable sum. That was just way out of my price range. At the time uh, of my life, I just didn't have $1,200 to spend on a piece of cardboard. So I kind of forgot about it and watched as the, the card's value just continued to grow and grow through the years as uh, this hobby's become more and more popular again. Uh, so I you know, didn't get a chance to get it back then and uh, now had this money set aside, saw this pop up in a near mint to mint 8, uh, albeit an SGC, and I, and I put a bid on it, you know, put my high bid on it. 
and I think several of you collectors can relate to, uh, to that fact when you when you're trying to buy a big item and you have your high bid and you see the clock clicking down and you just assume someone's going to outbid you and then all of a sudden it hits zero and then the reality of the situation hits you that I have placed this large bid on this card and now I own it or now I have to pay for it and so um, it was a quite interesting uh, breaking the news to my wife that I'd spent all this money on a piece of cardboard but uh, she was great I had to convince her that it was going to be an investment you know this is something that I think will ultimately go up and up in value and uh, hold its value for sure so uh, she was great about it, and uh, trust me. So hopefully I don't prove her wrong, but I don't think I will. This uh, this card has very good eye appeal. The the corners, the edges, the surface, it's, it's just impeccable. And uh, looking at it, you can see the centering is, is a little off as it presents here top to bottom. Or if you uh, hold it this way, uh, side to side, left to right, the centering is just a little off. But looking as it presents here, very sharp. The top and the sides are almost nearly perfect centered. It's just at the bottom where you have just a little bit uh, more white showing is the centering issue, and that would lead it to be an 8. You know, I have almost uh, 1,700 PSA graded cards, uh, maybe a little bit more than that. And I, I think I'm a good judge of character. I think uh, on a normal day, a good day, this would definitely be a PSA 8 as well, although I did not pay nearly what I probably would have to pay for a PSA 8. A very clean copy of this. Uh, super excited to have it. And I uh, just wanted to show that to you today. I know uh, I've been kind of rambling here just on one card, but it is a special card uh, to the collection. And uh, just one more card off now. I just need to get that Rose Rookie, you know, a guy can dream. But uh, once again, everybody, I appreciate all your posts and comments, and I'll talk to you again soon.